Greetings, fellow learners. Now, before we get into this thought-provoking world of chain of thought prompting, I have a thought-provoking question for you. When did you start to understand the importance of critical thinking? Now, for me, school was more a wave of, all right, here's some stuff on my plate, and let's just get it over with. And it wasn't really until about 11th grade that I really liked thinking outside the curriculum, and particularly in a computer science course that I took in 11th grade. And throughout college, it is this thinking outside of what is being taught that really served me well into trying to solve problems that really weren't solved much by my peers. And so flipping this question over to you, what is your take on critical thinking, and when did you see the importance of it? Share your story down below, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about chain of thought and chain of thought prompting, so let's get to it. So let's start with our LLM here. And these LLMs, first they start out as untrained, and then we will train them on a specific task of language modeling, which is basically we train them on tasks where we feed in some early part of a sentence and we try to make them predict the next word. So we feed some examples like this, and then eventually this language model becomes pre-trained. We have a pre-trained LLM. Now, this LLM can now be fine-tuned on a multitude of tasks. It could be question answering, it could be text summarization, and so many others. And it actually works pretty well on these tasks. However, there are a few tasks where LLMs, even when fine-tuned on a specific task, struggle. And this includes arithmetic or some common sense reasoning. And so how do we deal with this? Well. One way to deal with this is the chain of thought prompting. So chain of thought prompting is essentially the combination of two main concepts, which is few shot learning as well as reasoning. Let's talk about each of these starting with few shot learning. So for few shot learning, we have this LLM that's pre-trained on language modeling. And instead of just passing in, let's say, a direct question which we want to answer to, we will pass an exemplar problem. So we pass in a question where I have three tennis balls, I got three more, how many do I have? The answer is six. This is a complete example of what we want our model to do. We then pass in a question, and then we will now expect that the LLM will try to respond, similar to the example that we gave previously. Now this here is known as one-shot learning. It is one shot because we passed in one example before passing in our actual request. And so you could imagine with, you know, few shot learning, we have a few examples where we have one question answer pair over here. We have another question answer pair over here and probably some in between. And then we can pass in our question into the LLM and it can then generate a response. And so because we have a few examples that we pass in with our prompt, this is few shot learning. Few shot learning is actually quite useful. In fact, the original version of GPT-3 uses few shot learning. And the performance of few shot learning is pretty good. For the largest 175 billion parameter model, we see that few shot learning even outperforms the fine tuned state of the art for certain tasks. So there is some promise here. However, for certain other types of problems, especially those that involve arithmetic, we can see that the answer that is given is wrong. And so it struggles with arithmetic. And so for example, I have three oranges and eight two. How many do I have? The correct answer is not two oranges. So how do we deal with this? Well, this is where the second component comes in, and that is using reasoning. So now we have this prompt that has an example here of tennis balls. I have three tennis balls. I got three more. How many do I have? And we have six tennis balls. And then it proceeds with the original question that we want to ask. This is how we do it in one shot learning. But what we can do from here is now add a rationale or reasoning of how we got from this question to this answer. So we have that question, and in between the question and answer, we would say, well, I start with three tennis balls, and when I get three more balls, 
I add to the existing balls that I have, and three plus three is six, and hence six tennis balls is the answer. So the answer is six tennis balls. And now when we pass in the question with this more informed prompt with a chain of thought, we can then get a solution that is much more structured with some rationale. So we prompt the LLM to say, okay, I start with three oranges, and when I eat two, I subtract them from the original, and because three minus two is one, hence one orange should be the answer. And in this case, the entire chain of thought prompt is going to be this question along with the rationale, for the answer, and then the answer itself. And then we pass it along with the question that we want the LLM to actually answer. And so a chain of thought is intermediate steps of reasoning that link the input to the output. And the input could be a question, the output could be an answer. Now let's take a look at the performance of these across arithmetic data sets, as well as some common sense reasoning data sets. And looking at that, we can see that for the larger models, which are over like 100 billion parameters, we can see this blue line, which is the performance of chain of thought prompting, in some cases can even supersede, if not come pretty close to the fine-tuned version. And with fine-tuning, we tend to have the drawback of typically just collecting data and also having the amount of space in compute in order to actually tune the model but we can sidestep the entire thing with just taking the pre-trained model, using few shot learning, and interjecting some rationale in a few of those prompts. And so chain of thought prompting opens a world of opportunity for reasoning tasks while still using less compute and memory resources. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. What is an example of a chain of thought prompt? A the question, B, providing a question, an answer to that question, and then another question, C, providing the question, the rationale, the answer to that question, and then the question you want to ask, or D, providing the question, the rationale, and the answer, and then providing the question you want to ask along with the reasoning or rationale for that question you want to ask. Know that multiple answers may be correct, but I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. The correct answer is C, but can you tell me why? Give your reasoning in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now, that's going to do it for this quiz time and also for the video. It's a nice and short one. So if you do like what you saw, please do consider giving this video a like and also subscribe for more. And if you want some more AI content, do check out this video right over here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.